Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm still out here over at Zinn HQ in Frankfurt, Germany and I'm loving it. I'm trying to get all these amazing funky watches you don't normally see and try and get as many reviews in as possible over these couple of days. But I've got to say a big thank you to the guys out here for allowing this to happen. They've been absolute superstars, really, really nice people. And also, if you are after one of these, strongly recommend first class watches in Kenilworth. So anyway, what do we have here? Well, this was a bit of a milestone for the brand as this is the 140 STS, the yeah, S simply being um, a black, yeah, the Schwartz black model here. Now, what made it a land, uh, kind of milestone from was this watch back in the mid 80s went up into space. It was actually used by a German astronaut and went up on D1 Space Lab and it proved that a automatic wristwatch would actually work in space, which was kind of a big thing. Also, it later went up in the form of a 142, I believe that was around about the early 90s. Both of those watches featured the Le Manier 5100 movement, which obviously you can't get anymore, and that's why Zinn had to make the movement, yeah, you know, modified movement they did to get this kind of cool function on this one. First of all, side, well, actually, we mentioned the price first. This is obviously a more costly one, being that it's all black, and it comes in at 5,000 euros. The measurements for this watch is 44 millimeter look, uh, well, case size. Thickness, it looks chunky at 15.2 mil, but considering what, what it does is quite impressive. The lug to lug is 45 mil, so very compact. I think on this one, it's 22 millimeter um, actual uh, bracelet size. I think someone's put this one on the wrong actual, if I'm right, if it's like my 144. This should go down onto the lower spring bar holes. That's why that isn't quite sitting right on this one. But anyway, let's talk about that dial. The dial is wicked. There's a lot going on, but it's actually quite quick and easy to read. So if I start the chronograph running here, pressing the top pusher, you'll see we've got three orange hands. Obviously, this one going around now is your regular seconds for your chronograph. The hand at the top is the minute for the chronograph, so that's what makes it special as being a centre-mounted chrono. And the one down here is for the hours. Now, if you notice, that one down there says it can go to 12, so that will record 12 minutes of elapsed... Uh, sorry, 12 minutes. 12 hours, even, of elapsed time. The sub-dial over here is your constant running seconds for your regular timekeeping. I like how the hands on these are very, very reminiscent of the Zinn EZM1 range. It just looks, they look really cool. Plus, I've noticed as well, there's a good glow on this one. You re, The loom is actually pretty decent, I have to say. You do have the date over here at the 3 o'clock position. And relatively, you know, you, you haven't got much. You've got the Zinn script, the movement automatic. If you notice now as that runs over there, that minute hand behind will jump rather than slowly creep. It's, I do prefer when they do that personally. The Le Manier never actually did that. That used to creep where this one does jump. I think it just looks a little bit better, it has to be said. So anyway, as we come past all this, you'll notice the bezel on this is on the inside. So operating this crown here, it is a friction kind of style bezel. There is no clicking ratcheting on this one at all. So it's nice and simple to operate. You just simply line that up with the minute hand and then you start counting up go using that. So it's a nice way of recording a second amount of elapsed time. It's lovely to use. There is no, it doesn't seem like there's any kind of backlash in any way in the gearing for that at all. Overall, I quite like the dial. There's something about a center mounted chrono which just makes it quick and easy to read. I'm a big fan of them. As we come past that, the actual crystal is a sapphire crystal. It features AR on both the inside and the outside. And I've said it to many people, I still prefer to have the AR on both sides because simple fact is it's so clean in comparison. It keeps reflections down to an absolute minimal. Uh, if you're not one of these people who likes the AR on the outside, you can always ask a watchmaker to polish it off for you like myself. If anyone wants that service done, bring it to me. I'll do it. So anyway, the case itself ha has been tagmented. So we have um, any of the black modern watches from Zinn have to be tagmented. So that means you're getting a surface hardness of 1800 Vickers. I once dropped one of my black Zins. It fell off my wrist, went straight onto this sidewalk or curb, we say in, in, yeah, in the UK. And 
payment even, sorry, and it didn't mark it at all. That was how impressed I was with it. Now, obviously here we have this little kind of um, little device actually screwed into the body of the watch. Well, that's actually a titanium shell housing copper sulfide crystals. So what Zinn have done to stop any kind of fogging within the watch at all, because whenever you screw the back on the watch, there's always going to be a certain amount of moisture. You can't help it. It's just naturally in the oxygen around us, you know. So they put the watch into a vacuum, remove the oxygen, then pump in an inert gas. But the other thing they have to do, that inert gas has thinner, smaller molecules than the actual oxygen. So they have to replace the actual crystal, uh, sorry, the crystal gasket and all the seals for a more advanced type so if you were to leave this watch face down in snow or in you know like somewhere cold plunge pool going out to a sauna whatever you'll get no condensation form under the crystal of this watch at all if you try that with any high-end watch rolex uh, patek you name it you know with tackle you know omega anything you'll get condensation form. I would not recommend it as that isn't actually good for your watch to lay it all concentrate in one area. So that's called their AR dehumidifying system. Now, as we come past that, we come over to this side, we've got the exposed pushers and the crown. The crown isn't a screw down crown, though it is heavily reset into the actual body of the watch. I must say it's quite hard to get out. You do need your fingernail to re dig in there to get, yeah, actually unscrew that to, not unscrew, but to pull it out. The watch features 100 meters of water resistance. Now the chronograph, you may say water resistance and chrono, chrono pushers aren't the best you know, thing to have. But these feature Zin's D3 system. So it enables you underwater at any of the depths of watch it is actually made for to operate the Krona, which is, you know, really quite impressive to be fair. Now, as we come round to the back, we do have a solid case back on there, which does obviously talk about the uh, history where you got the D, uh, D1 uh, mission, I think, on the back. But underneath that is the SZ01. Now I put this one on the time graph and to be fair, it's a little bit awkward because that witchy pro over there, the expert, is a live style one. It doesn't um, record it the way mine does at home. So I think we say minus one, but I would like to um, alter the settings and see um, if I can actually, if it's any better than that. It's a 20... Uh, 26 no I think it's a 28 joule movement it's basically a mod a heavily modified I think it was the 7 ETA 7750 and it is you know to use this I would love to see how I do it. I'd love to strip one down and actually have a look at one it would be quite interesting to see what they've done to actually do that the watch also features has a low pressure rate into it as well so it's passed on that as we come past all that though we have the good old fashioned H-Link bracelet with the Allen key inserts there. They're absolutely great. The clasp um, is the old style one on this, but I believe it probably will be getting the new sole clasp very soon on these. Um, Dive link extension on the back of there. These are very, very solid. Let me put it on my wrist so you've got an idea how it looks. A quick wrist check. And I am wearing the EZM1, which is at, yeah, which actually is a Le Manier 5100 movement. In fact, it was the very last um, watch to ever have a 5100 movement ever fitted to it. Um, Bob, he's gone for the 717, which is an absolute beast of a watch. My wrist size is seven and a quarter inches, um, which works out to around about 18.5 centimeters. You would not believe the amount of people who say, what's your wrist size? Well, if they watch the video all the way through, they would know. So this is it on the wrist, and it is just so cool. I think it is a really cool beast of a watch. Um, not going to be for everyone, but I still like it nonetheless, and a great bit of history as well. Anyway, guys, all the best, and most importantly, you will stay safe out there. Take care. Bye.